Hello, welcome to Restaurant Technology Systems, second part. Um, in the first part, as you may remember, that we have covered point of sale system, which is the heart of a restaurant system, that was covered in length. So now we are going to talk about table management system and home delivery software that goes with it, frequent dining and gift card programs, inventory control system, and menu management system. So let's start with the table management system. Imagine that you are going to a restaurant, a full service restaurant, which means that you are going to go and then greeted by the host or hostess and then they will, he or she will take you to a table and then you will sit down and wait for the server to come and take your order and then you order your food is brought to you by your server and then you pay at the end of the meal. So this is the definition of a full service uh, restaurant. In this particular restaurant, um, when you are seated by the host, the host seats you to a table based on some criteria. The restaurants usually have sections, and in these sections are divided by the servers. For the US restaurants, this is particularly even more important because the servers work based on the tips. So allocating a similar number of guests in each station kind of ensures you that the servers will get a similar amount of tip at the end of the day. If you give to one server more guests than the others, there are two part potential problems with it. One is that one server will get more tips than the other, and the other one is that that one server who got more tables than the other one may be just overwhelmed, hence the customer service, guest service may suffer. So table management system brings solutions to these problems. It is uh, aimed to reduce guest rates, improve service, increase turns, and improve in communication between employees and um, the guests, and employees and the guests, uh, among the employees by itself and also between the employees and the guest. So if you were to um, look at the tasks that has been done, and I'm going to share with you a video in a second, so you will be able to understand better how table management is the system is used. So what I'm telling you is going to really help when you see the video, you'll actually connect the dots. Reservation processing and wait list management. What that means is that if you have a table management um, module to attach to your point of sale system, that you can actually ask your guests to make reservations or you can make the reservations for them. So that when you have a reservation for six people for at 7 p.m., the table management system can actually prevent you from giving that table um, before 7 p.m. If somebody comes at 6.30, you need to make sure that table is ready for your reservation. Maybe five, 10, 15 minute wait is not a big problem, but if you take a reservation for a table at 7 p.m. and your party arrives there and you tell them, oh, I'm sorry, I just seated there a party of six just 10 minutes ago. You have to wait two hours. Nobody will like that. So table management system helps you to be able to make reservations plus also reserve you the seat that, that your guest will need. Geographically display table status. Again, in the video that you're gonna see soon, you are going to be able to understand this. Um, I can even show you some uh, short um, video footage of this, what I mean. Graphically display table status. It can identify the tables has been seated longer than the desired seating time, triggering an appropriate tactical response to turn the table. Maybe people sit there too long and you can maybe uh, alert your server to be able to go there and ask for uh, dessert or if they want anything else before the check some kind of like this that will help you to have them uh, move out and then turn the table, meaning that somebody else can come and eat at the table. Uh, group and private room reservations are also possible. What you see now, what you are going to see is, is, a, is a software called GuestBridge. There are tons of different software. This, uh, the next two examples are the ones that I shot myself the videos on a trade show, which is called High Tech. Uh, hospitality industry technology exhibition and conference. Let's watch this video 
and then we will talk more about table manual system. Table management is tied directly into the reservation system. So when you have reservation list on your guest, you have the ability to seat a guest from this screen just by finding their name in the list, and then there's okay. a dash under the table number column, and you can okay. just touch that and then touch the table that you're seating them on, and then they're seated. Oh. Then once so you see it comes red. Yes. Okay. All the colors change on the table based on uh -huh, table status, and actually that's not a. Let's click on one of the tables. You've got several different colors that the tables can turn. Yellow means that the table is pre-reserved by a specific party during the turn. Uh, if you partially seat a table, then it turns it teal and it puts the guest's last name at the bottom of the table so that it's easier to find the rest of their party when, the, when they arrive. The tables will turn red when they're fully seated, and then what displays at the bottom of the screen is customizable by the venue, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Okay. Uh, when a table stays longer than the default duration for that particular uh, party size on that shift, which can be controlled independently for lunch and dinner, then it will turn purple to indicate that it's either they're camping on the table or somebody hasn't cleared the table. Oh. Uh, then you've got green, which can be dessert or check down so that you know that you're going to get the table back pretty soon. And then once you clear the table, then it just turns blue and goes back to... And then if you've got multiple t tables for the same party, then it asks you, are you clearing all the tables or are you just condensing? Oh. So if you press yes, then it just turns the table status back to blue. Then, uh, as far as table management in most restaurants, you can seat a guest on a table and they may not always want to be at that table. Yes. So once you've seated a guest, you can touch the table and choose move guest and oh. then move them to another table altogether and it just reseats the guest. Okay. Just click. Table management tasks. As you can see in the video, you can actually assign tables and this way you can balance the sections and it can automatically match a guest seating preference if the guest when he or she makes the reservation i would like to sit next to the window or i would like to sit next to the buffet line or i would like to sit next to the piano uh, bar uh, piano um, in your restaurant i mean i'm just uh, making some examples here um, or non-smoking section if you have a smoking section outside patio seating whatever that might be that you can actually do that. And also this actually serves as a restaurant-wide communication network. Do you remember in the video you've seen different colors? As the table progress in their meal, that colors change. So when somebody, a server, looks at his or her, uh, her own sections, uh, they will be able to tell immediately where they are likely to expect to get a new guest or not. Can be linked to your online reservation system. Uh, guest greeting. Uh, what that means is that this is kind of a little bit high tech. With the RFID uh, VIP cards, let's say that you have a, a guest loyalty program, you give your guest a loyalty card. If that card has an RFID enabled radio frequency identification, or if you if they have an app and then you can understand when they come, actually it will pop up that person's the guest's picture and the name. Uh, and even the last order, what they have ordered before. So this way you can say, oh, Mr. Johnson, welcome back. Oh my God, that's so good to see you. Uh, would you like me to seat you in your last uh, table? And can I just even start your order with the cocktail that you like? I'm, again, I'm making this up, but again, the technology can help you with those kind of things. And the same thing, just like the host and hostess can do, the server also can identify the guest if that person has some kind of a uh, system that indicates uh, you that that person came back. Table and wait alert. Again, you can see how long is the wait going to be uh, um, take place. The table management system, depending upon where the guests are located in their meals, if, if three tables are eating their dessert, most likely in the next 10, 15 minutes, they, got, they are going to leave. So the table management system can actually code your waiting time. If you have a new guest just came in, but all of your tables are full, you can look and say that, um, I'm happy to take your name in the waiting list. Uh, we are expecting about 20 minutes. Even though it may say 15 minutes, you may exaggerate a little bit, not too much, just to exceed the expectations. If you code them 20 minutes, and then you bring them a table uh, much earlier 
then you will increase their satisfaction but you don't want to exaggerate too much because if you say oh you have to wait 50 minutes they may just leave your restaurant table seating is also another feature table service uh, guests can page the service if you have this um, buttons on the table which I will um, show you a quick video and you can use this as a CRM customer relationship management the you can keep track of the history of the guests what they want what they like what they don't like if they have complained before etc this is another company called LRS long range systems this uh, company has also a solution for table management system let's see how this works this system was developed to let the hostess know exactly when an open table becomes available so that they can turn tables faster. That's all that's what it's all about. Color coded. Color coded. Red means the, the tables are closed. closed yes. That means somebody's sitting there. Yellow means that the table's being bust. Green means the table's open. White means the table is on hold. Means maybe reserved. Reserved, Somebody's correct. Come, yeah. So typically what the hostess is gonna see. And that means that the customer is being paged for that table right then, oh, a little lightning bolt. Oh, uh, typically what they're going to see is nothing but red. And then all of a sudden the table is going to become open and we can do this remotely. So let me see if I can find a good table here. We'll do 72. Okay. So I'll do it right here. Maybe you can get both of them in. Yeah. I'll do seven, two, open. It turned green uh, right away. Yeah, so you walk around the restaurant with this, manager updates. types in, and it updates right away. Wonderful. So as soon as there's a table open, this little green light comes on, and all you do is touch it. And it automatically picks the next party for that size table. Then it asks if you want a page. You hit page, and it will either page them on their cell phone or on one of our pagers, like those right over there. Wonderful. That's and and uh, that's it. We're just trying to help you turn your tables faster. Or if he pushed the seat, that was the, it's being seated, right? Right. If the guest was available right, right. there. If we touch the guest when they come back to the, to the hostess stand right. to be seated, we hit seat. The name just fell off of there, and the table is now red. So now it's taken. I see. Well, that's wonderful. Right. That's great. Yeah, this is the lowest cost. Uh, table management system on the market, Okay. very low cost. And you can uh, create sections here for the servers, like that's server coming, Joe, server Mary. Right, that's coming in our third version. Okay. And this is our second version. The third one's coming out in probably three or four months. Every server will have a pager like this. Okay. Now, this is also an electronic wait list. Right. Hostess will hit walk-in, um, party size. Smoking, non-smoking, first available, wait time, it'll automatically calculate it for you, but you can adjust it. And we'll say Fred, enter, and we give him the pager number, we'll say 67, and there's Fred. And Fred's on there, size is 5, pager number 67. And he was quoted a 10 minute wait. He's been waiting zero minutes right now. Okay. Now, when the third version comes out, you're asking about the different server sections. Right. When we seat that customer, that server will get a, a page and it'll say, Fred, party of five. Uh, table. It's an anniversary and what table number. So they can just walk up. So typically, you know, instead of first names when we do that, you're going to want to do last names. And so you can say, Hello, Robinson Party, or hello, Mr. Mrs. Robinson. And so that's going to be pretty cool. Nobody else is doing anything like that. What is this? This is a, a pager to let them know when their table's ready. Okay. So when we page them, they can be at the bar or in the bathroom or whatever. Yeah, and we just... I see. It just flashes and vibrates. Just like that. And this particular version, you can put advertising in here uh, about... Um, appetizers or drinks or whatever but they you can use these two too right, right. any of those okay. sure in the frequent dining program what you do is that the purpose of the frequent dining program is to create and maintain customer loyalty just like i gave the example in table management system if a 
frequent guest diner comes back to your restaurant if you know them if you recognize them if you customize your service based on what they like before and that's going to increase the customer loyalty even more and increase the revenue for example if you know that that person always orders Bud Light let's say beer you can just say Mr. Johnson would you like me to get you started with Bud Light uh, and then they'll say oh wow how do they know um, again technology helps us here whatever or when they order let's say the guest has a diabetic issue and you know that in the frequent dining program and they ordered something that has sugar in it you can say mr. Johnson just to be sure that I'm just gonna let you know that this item has sugar I know that you are sensitive to items that contain sugar would you like me to change your order things like this frequent dining programs reward return customers with points you can give them X number of points for every dollar that they spend or time that they visit then they can come back and exchange this for free desserts half price specials dollars off their meals etc some kind of incentive for people to choose your restaurant over another may award, uh, award points or dollar amounts as we have said uh, maybe come nine times the ten time is free or um, you get buy on uh, five main course uh, entrees and then get the six one free whatever that might be and the gift cards are similar gift cards are similar to frequent diner program uh, in the what the exception is that in the gift card you don't really know who that person is uh, restaurants created this this um, system because they would like to increase these sales so they would like people to buy the gift cards in advance or to give this to other people uh, as the birthday gifts or other kind of a gift so that people can choose that particular restaurant and use their gift cards many point of sale systems have gift card modules to track gift cards certificate sales to ensure that they are being sold and redeemed securely and correctly carted swipe at the point of sale terminals for card issuances transactions and balance inquiries Starbucks the specialty coffee retailer has benefited greatly from its gift card program which accounts for 10% of all transactions furthermore over a third are being refilled and reused because it saves customers time in line since swiping gift card speeds the transaction process and also Starbucks also created an online app that work as a gift card or a frequent dining program so they combined these two together many restaurant chains also follow the suite here and they have created this mobile apps that you can app download to your phone and you can use it this uh, LRS has a system uh, for dispensing a gift card in a restaurant so restaurants can utilize this in their lobby area when the guests are waiting or uh, when they went to the restroom or whatever they may be able to see and then, then purchase a gift card for next time and you can even give incentives you can say buy a $50 uh, gift card pay only $40 so you look like you're giving them about 20% discount uh, but in reality you are increasing your sales and you're enticing them to come back to your restaurant again and again so things like this and here's a video that shows how this dispenser system works for a restaurant to begin your transaction I'm going to talk to her I'm going to talk to you can actually buy the gift card and take their credit card she asked for a zip code and that's for security reasons you can pick any amount that you want ten dollars and I want to get just one card today and it's going to verify all that information. From there, it actually grabs your phone line, dials out, it's going to verify, it's going to go to your um, network. It has a power plug to it. With that, it's going to spit it out and give you a receipt. This is great because it encourages your guests to help themselves. It reminds them constantly, not just at Christmas time, to buy your card. And you can focus in the uh, lobby area so Correct. While they are Correct, exactly. And this actually is used again with your customer. Correct. And it's going to print the receipt. Thank you for your business. Well, that's great day. Inventory control is another system 
in my opinion probably after point of sale system is one of the most important systems that a restaurant should utilize even if a mom and pop restaurant because one of the main reasons why restaurants fail is lack of inventory control restaurant industry as we have mentioned this in the first lecture video for point of sales is that uh, the profit margin is quite thin so what that means is that you need um, to be able to control the cost efficiently and on a daily basis not at the end of the month when you do the inventory so the restaurants um, if you they don't use any uh, technology the way that they do it they buy ingredients they buy rice they buy meat eggs flour uh, whatever that they are they're going to use to make their menu items and then they obviously use them to make their menu items and then they sell them and at the end of the month they hopefully should go back to the inventory and then count what they have in the inventory so what they have on hand minus what they have left over is going to show them the the, the food items used that month so by um, subtracting what you had in the beginning what you left over at the end of the month is going to give you the amount and the dollar amount of the uh, inventory used if you compare that against your um, sales then it's going to you will be able to calculate your food cost percentage in a typical restaurant the food cost should not go over 30 percent between 28 to 32 percent that's the range of the food cost hopefully you are 30 percent or less if you are more what that means is that you are simply eating from that thin profit margin that you have and if you do this carefully that hopefully you are not going to be part of that statistics that almost seven out of ten restaurants fail in the first three years so if you use inventory control system and reduce your food cost two three percent that's a lot of money actually even though it may look little but it's going to give you a lot of increase in your bottom line basic rules they may assist in reducing food cost uh, increase the frequency of taking inventory as I mentioned most restaurants normally take an inventory once a month that is sometimes too long because if you know that you have used a lot of high cost food cost is very high oh my god by the time you go back it's already too late but the regular the rule of thumb is that weekly uh, inventory taking inventory means is at the end of the period let that be one week two weeks or a month hopefully should not be even more than a month at the very uh, latest that it should be a month you go and count your inventory I'm gonna give you an example uh, I have this mixed nuts in my hand imagine that your restaurant sells only this mixed nut obviously in reality restaurants will not just sell this you know retail stores grocery stores will sell this but imagine for the time being that you are selling this um, mixed nut and if you have 100 if you bought you're opening your restaurant and you bought 100 of them so you are going to sell these items somebody's going to come and buy you're going to give them so you had 100 you should have 99 right now so you sold one more now you should have 98 what i'm just explaining to you right now here that if your inventory control system keeps track of what you sold and deduct that from the inventory then you will know what we call perpetual inventory perpetual inventory is what you should have based on the sales that you are making if what happened you I even hear the question that you ask what what would happen if this was not just simple this mix nut that you are selling in your restaurant what would happen if this would be a hamburger it's much more complex or salad garden salad where you have tomatoes lettuce carrot uh, you name it or if you have a burger you have the bun you have the the beef patty you have the tomato lettuce ketchup uh, mustard um, cheese all that stuff 
Again, an inventory control system along with the menu management system, which we're gonna cover, if they work together well, that when you sell this hamburger, that point of sale system talks to the inventory management system, and the inventory management system is going to deduct all the ingredients of that burger. It will know. We are going, I'm gonna show you an example later, but once you create that, um, the menu item, let's say recipe, that burger, you are going to tell um, your system that burger is composed of one bun, up and down, right? One, one pair of bun. So if you have 100 bun, you sold one, it will go to 99. Tomato is not that easy. You're not going to use one whole tomato. How are you going to calculate that? Or how does the inventory control system control that? Very simple. Your chef is going to tell the inventory control system that menu management system also is part of it, is going to tell in that recipe that I'm going to use one slice of tomato. And your chef will tell you that, hey, if I were to get a regular tomato, I can create 15 slides from it. How does the chef know? From experience it will tell you he or she will tell you that that's then if you sell this burger then your inventory system will deduct one uh, one fifteenth of a tomato so every 15 burgers that you sell one uh, each tomato will be deducted but you can ask me professor we don't buy tomatoes by the count mostly we buy them by pound or kilogram if you're in uh, outside of uh, America. How does uh, the software know that one slice is 15 uh, and one, one, one tomato is the cost of that tomato? How does it know? Very simple. Again, your chef, based on the experience, will tell you that one kilogram tomato is six each or one pound of tomato is three each. Of course, there are different types of tomato, Roma tomato, beef steak tomato. Depending upon what tomato that you're using in your burgers, that each is going to change and hence the calculation is going to change. It looks or maybe sounds like a rocket science, right? Not really. It's very simple. And it's really amazing because if you do this, A, the restaurant manager, owner, chef, whatever, can know the perpetual inventory in real time. Perpetual inventory is not your real inventory, is the inventory you should have based on the sales. But if you also count, if you take the physical inventory, if you go to your um, the storage room where you keep the dry foods or freezer where you keep all the meats and then you count what you have left there. Let's say that you bought in the beginning of the week 100 pounds of steak. You go there at the end of the week and you found only 30 pounds. So you know easily that you use 70 pounds. It doesn't mean that you sold 70 pounds. It means that you use 70 pounds. Why do I make that difference? The reason why I make that difference is because sometimes what you use is not necessarily what you sell. There is waste, theft, and shrinkage happens. 70 pounds of meat doesn't mean that 70 pounds of output in terms of what the guests can buy. Sometimes waste happens. The meat is um, uh, perished. Maybe 10% of it is gone to the trash can. You can count for it. Or sometimes st stealing can happen. People can steal. I mean, we are humans. It happens many places. So if that's the case, then you will again know. Or shrinkage. One kilogram or one pound of banana is not one pound or kilogram banana when you make a fruit salad. Why? Because we peel it, right? We peel the banana. This will give us um, the... If you know um, the shrinkage already, for banana meat is another good example. One kilogram of pound beef you put in the oven after 30, 40 minutes, it doesn't mean that it's going to be 30, I um, mean one pound left over because the water will evaporate and then you are going to have probably, let's say 70% of it. Those shrinkage is known and usually can be also inserted in the inventory control, that's what we expect. But 
if there is too much waste or stealing let's say that we use 70 uh, pounds of meat but we only sold menu items that would only consume 50 pounds of meat let's say burgers okay then you are going to ask yourself I have 20 pounds of meat that I use but I didn't make money why so you can go back to your chefs and inquire about this if there is a stealing hopefully you can find out or if there is a waste maybe you have a new chef who doesn't know how to cut the meat and he or she cuts it in such a way that it's wasted and he keeps pushing them in the um, trash bin so things like this happen why I'm spending so much time in this is that because restaurant industry is a very thin razor sharp uh, profit margin industry and also not controlling your cost is one of the main reasons why you fail in the restaurant industry for that reason technology come into rescue technology can really really help and also help us with the taking inventory but also reduce the level of inventory by using these kind of software along with the many management software that can actually um, predict how long inventory you need um, so that you don't buy too much. Uh, A, for your money, B, that you will reduce the shrinkage and waste and theft. Um, inventory control system tracks product quantities and prices, provides accurate information on inventory activities in a timely manner, uh, enabling management to better control food costs. So, for example, let, what, what I mean by this is that if you are um, using a fish special and you're using let's say crab or salmon or swordfish whatever that might be and the cost of that item skyrocketed that week that you actually can understand this and ask yourself that do i really because you can't change your menu pricing every week if you have that sal salmon for twenty dollars uh, as a main course in your restaurant just because the price of a salmon increased you can't say that oh today we're gonna sell it for $28 so for that reason what you can do is that it will give you this alerts that saying that look you use a lot of, of this item and the cost for this item increased this week do you want to use a substitute maybe you're using asparagus but the cost is so high as a side item you can switch to beans for some time to be able to control the cost again all of this the main purpose is to control the cost so that I can keep it under 30 percent uh, of the sales my food cost so that I can make money so that I can keep my restaurant open makes taking and extending inventories and ordering and receiving easier so in this video I want to show you how Oracle uh, which is now a hospitality technology company Oracle bought Marcos Fidelio uh, several years before and they have a solution for inventory management let's watch this video how they tackle this problem this is Lauren Lauren runs a chain of restaurants serving great food to happy guests but two years ago the business nearly folded food costs went up and the restaurants stopped making money Lauren turned her business around with inventory management from Oracle Food and Beverage. Inventory management gives Laura control of her food costs. The solution shows her what she should have in stock, what has been sold, and where there are deviations. For example, what has been wasted. It starts by helping Lauren with her ordering. Inventory management suggests an order based on a forecast or template, which Lauren can adjust. Ordering with a forecast takes less time and saves her a lot of money per restaurant per year. Lauren is ordering less because she's using less food and drink. With inventory management, she now knows what she should have on the shelves. That means she can prevent theft. Her teams know that stock is valuable and is being checked, and if items are being stolen, she can take action. But theft was not Lauren's main issue. With inventory management, she realized that food waste was her problem. The cooks were over portioning and giving food away. Food was being kept too long until it had to be thrown out. Thanks to inventory management, Lauren could see the deviations. She no longer over orders so that food is wasted. 
and she retrained her staff on portioning. This has saved her money every week in every restaurant. Inventory management is also integrated with Lauren's vendor, so her invoices are online. If crab meat seems to have doubled in price, Lauren can compare it to last month and take action. She can then negotiate a new price with the vendor using data from inventory management. Or she can use menu modeling. Are her famous crab cakes still making a profit? Should she put up her prices or change the recipe? All of this is possible because inventory management is integrated with Lauren's point of sale system. It provides real-time stock on hand. Every time a dish or drink is purchased, her inventory is updated. She knows what's been ordered, what is being used, and what is being lost through waste or theft. She also knows the cost of sale of every item on her menu. With that information, she's more profitable than ever. Great job, Lauren. Find out more about how inventory management from Oracle Food & Beverage can make your operation more profitable. Contact your account manager or visit us online today. As you can see in this video, that inventory control system works with different mechanics. So you need to have a vendor file. So who are you going to buy? Why do we need to have a vendor? It's very uh, easy because if the inventory control system that you're using is connected to your vendors electronically, you can actually, with the push of a button, you can create a purchase order, which is what we do every single day in a restaurant. Um, we usually create a purchase order and the purchasing agent and of course controller ensures that they go and buy these items. Let's say that your chef said that for tomorrow I need um, 50 kilo pounds of beef and I need this pounds of chicken and, and salmon and lettuce, tomato, this, that, whatever that might be, or tablecloth or maybe forks, you know, silverware, whatever that might be that you can need. And then you actually, if you have this inventory control system software, you can create a purchase order and then push the button that inventory control system actually can take this to uh, all the vendors electronically. And if they have the pricing available, it can actually uh, we take the pricing to your system so that you can compare vendor A to vendor B to vendor C then you can just pick and choose. I wanna buy this item, this item, this item from this vendor, and I wanna buy this item, this item, this item from vendor B. Or in some cases, maybe let's say vendor A gave you more uh, expensive pricing on the things that you buy than vendor B and C. But because you have a, such a good relationship with them, you may sometimes choose to go for a higher price. See, that's where the human being comes. The technology in inventory control system helps us, but it will not make the decision by itself. So you need to actually um, um, to be able to make that decision for a variety of different reasons. Uh, when you create the vendor file and the product file, so now you know um, where, you, where you usually buy this and then where you can also buy it. As you can see here in the example, here's the vendor number, my product code. Product code ensures me that I'm going to refer to them as the code uh, that, that, um, that particular vendor actually recognizes it. Let me give you one example. Let's say you want to buy chicken wings, okay, from U.S. Foods. Uh, Cisco, which Cisco bought U.S. Foods, now they are one company, but um, and then I want to get the pricing or I want to place an order to Cisco and because there are many, many different chicken wings, chicken wings with buffalo sauce, hot sauce, or naked, or whatever that might be, cooked or uncooked, you name it then they have a code for that item that you can put that in your system so that if I am going to order this from Cisco or US Foods or whatever that was, Shamrock uh, Foods or, or, or Costco, whatever that you're using, that you are going to use their code, what they call that item, so that it's, not, it's going to prevent misunderstandings. So that you order um, the chicken wings, but you get chicken wings buffalo sauce. 
uh, with Buffalo sauce. So you don't want that maybe. So that's what, and product brand, uh, you can inform here, the pack size, case cost, row good number, and inventory location, and also general ledger account number. So this is for accounting purposes. This inventory location is the location of this in my uh, refrigerator. If this is a chicken wing, most likely I'm gonna keep this in walk-in. Walk-in is the place in a restaurant where you can actually store the items, like a refrigerator that you can walk in. That's why it's called walk-in. In depending upon how big the size of the restaurant, you can have walk-in A, walk-in B, walk-in C. You can have freezer separately, or the freezer can be inside the walk-in. You can have dry storage, um, dry food storage. You can have beverage storage. You can have all these different places and you can have locations there. Why these locations are important? For two reasons. One is that when I order an item and I receive this item, after I receive this item, that I am going to um, know where this, where to put this item. So I'm gonna know that inventory location number two, I can even put here, for example, WA1, walk-in, uh, WI1, walk-in one, um, location number two. So location number two, you can even put shelf numbers, some systems. So you go inside the inventory room, that um, that storage area, and then shelf one, location number two. So you know where, and that also comes handy when you are doing the, taking the inventory. In other words, some software called this taking extension. So that's the time where at the end of the week or the month that you count the items there. So. This becomes very, very important because if you know this case cost and how many inside you have, then I am going to be able to calculate this um, per count, how much that I'm going to use this watermelon. So there is uh, 18 in that order that I'm going to have and I will be able to, based on how much I use, uh, let's say that I'm doing a fruit, um, uh, fruit salad. And in that fruit salad, if I have watermelon, maybe I use a quarter of a watermelon for that recipe. So I will be able to calculate the cost based on how much I'm buying that, that uh, watermelon. So the other one is step number two. Once I do that, I design inventory worksheet. That's the order of the items on the worksheet should reflect of the sequence of items on shelves to expedite uh, inventory taking. Uh, what that means is that this is, again, um, um, the, the graph that you're using to be able to see the shelves and, um, uh, and how I can do it. So, again, this is sequence that shows me here for that one, uh, tomato paste, um, and I can dedicate, tell that I'm going to take this inventory per month or not. Step number three is handheld devices such as palms uh, or pocket PC. Palms is old now, but I have actually a video here that I'm going to show you in a second. The reason why I want to show you, even though the handheld system that they use, uh, again, for those of you who are in the college right now watching this video, you may not even remember this. They used to be called PDA, personal digital assistant. Now these cell phones are smartphones, in other words, is actually doing the same thing that uh, at least partially same thing that they were doing before. Um, I'm gonna show that video to you so you can actually use those systems to take inventory. And you can also use some uh, technology, uh, automatization of the take the uh, liquor inventory. Let's watch this video quickly and then I'm gonna show you RFID tag video. Scans you to see codes. Okay. It did. Wonderful. And then you... Well, here, take my code. You can do partials. If it's a partial bottle, you can lock wow. it partial. Yeah. This is where you do your full bottles. Let's say you had two more and one partial. You can hit OK and then go to the next one. Okay. So we have a technology that um, calculates... Oh, no. <laughs> that calculates to the tenth of a bottle based on the shape of the bottle and the liters. Let me get this. So when you scan the different shape, it's going to show... Wow, that is cool. It is very cool. 
as you can see here in Akobar is actually you can take partial videos you can see the lady was scanning the barcode on a, on a bottle it will bring the shape of the bottle and then you can say I mean if imagine that this mix nut here uh, which is empty if this was a beverage that I can see uh, if it is half so by scanning the barcode here I know it's exactly this beverage by telling that I have two full and a half and then I know how much I have left why do I do this remember to be able to calculate how much I used and I'm going to compare how much I used if I had 10 boxes like this before and now I have one and a half so I know that I use eight and a half uh, boxes so I will compare it against my sales don't forget the whole idea is to control the cost the better that I control the cost the more profit margin I'm going to have the more profit the more chance that I'm going to survive and let's look at this technology here touch and pour that's the name of the technology where you can use in a bar that's going to actually help you with the inventory remember that that perpetual inventory that I told you if you use this technology that you can actually uh, keep track of your inventory to a very very almost exact um, quantity let's watch this video can you please tell us how this works what does it do what is the main and idea how, yeah. goal yeah. okay well the main idea is to dispense liquor in a fashionable way it looks very good doing it in a simple way you just touch the lever and it pours whatever volume you registered it to you do set it, yeah. Yeah, oh, whatever perfect. set to do you can also do a second volume by holding it till the light blinks and it does a short pour sure. or you know a second volume and this is all wired yes with to the system exactly okay so how you enter the uh, requirements Which he will show us through yeah. a PC <coughs> you know and this is the report that you would get at the end of the evening saying oh, all the yeah. all the different brands that you have, how much of them are sold and how much money it represents, and basically how much the bartender owes you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <coughs> and, uh, Did he serve more than it was, he was supposed to yeah, be? Yeah, exactly. So, what about cocktails? You well, That doesn't do the cocktails, this system? Well, sure, because we do have two volumes. You can, for example, have the, the smaller volume be a half ounce, maybe. And so, you, yeah, you're mixing you know, four of those to make a two ounce drink. Okay. So you, have, you can set it. And then maybe, you know, if you're making a martini and you want a large, a very large pour, mm -hmm. you can have, for example, two bottles of vodka. Mm -hmm. with, so that gives you four different volumes of vodka. Okay. And how much does this system cost? Um, let's take an average bar, which may have about 48 bottles, pretty, pretty good size bar. Uh, we're probably looking at about a $10,000 investment. Okay. And, but the payoff is usually about four to six months based upon theft, spillage, and overpours. Yeah. I see. A lot of a lot of money is lost there. There's yeah. a lot of drinks being uh, stolen. Do you think bartenders like this because they tend to be boop, 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 very quick? Well, is this quick enough? Do you think it's very quick? Yes. Um, is it as quick as somebody's doing this? Probably not. But there's no control in that. You know, we, right. there's always a balance. If you want control, or do you want speed? And you want the best of both. Right. So this uh, we believe is it. Looks okay, good. wonderful. Thank you very much. You're Thank, Thank you. you. And what is this device over here? That's the brains. It has the printer in it. Oh, that's the, okay. Yeah, it prints out the reports. But that's not the PC that you put the ounces, right? Well, yes, we can do that through here. It can yeah. be a standalone system, but it can also just connect to a PC. And, do it. and this is all wired, not wireless, right? Wired, right. Wired, okay. Yeah. Okay, perfect. We Thank you very much. Wireless. I know. It's perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. The last one that I want to show you here is the radio frequency identification tags. I think about 10 years ago, we started to see this technology. Now it's more mature, but by uh, putting a spout on your drink, on your bottle, that is RFID enabled as the bartender tilts the, the, the bottle, it knows what bottle that is. And as it, it pours, it knows how long it is poured based on that one it calculates how much um, beverage has been dispensed and hence can calculate the perpetual inventory how much left over and compare that against the sales at, at all the time this way i know that if one of my bartenders spend a lot of beverage but not have make enough sales what does that mean maybe he or she is stealing or wasting 
right? Or stealing in the form of he may doing or she may doing himself, or give it to your friends or good customers for an exchange of a tip, for example, or just to simply sell but take the money in his or her pocket. Let's watch this video how this RFID tags work in this inventory control system. How does it understand that you're poor? Pardon me? How does it understand? It's in the chip. And you program this so that it knows what it is inside? Yeah, absolutely. That's why we said it in the beginning. Um, also with the beer, the same thing with the beer. I'm not pulling this. There's a beer. It'll show you your keg. Gotcha. So you don't have to go down and shake the keg anymore and see what's happening with that. And if you have multiple, I think you were saying you have multiple kegs, mm -hmm. it'll set it up for two kegs. You just double it. Instead of 100%, you have 200%. Now, let's say what happens on, uh, on the morning when they're doing inventory. Mm -hmm. They go to the handheld and see what's on. Sure they can. Well, they just hit a print. Hit print. You print and it tells you what each bottle has. Absolutely. I've never seen something like this before. This yeah, is good. This is, this is cool. Took us a long I mean, time. I've to... seen like you know the bars you. Swipe yeah, no, no, no. This that'll... is this is once you do it once you do it the first time like when we did we did Gulfstream Park, we did we've got 600 tags in there now. When we're done, when we're finished, we'll have 3,500 tags in there. So what we did is we could go through and all right, we look at this bottle. All right, that's 70 percent. So you don't have to go crazy. I just the first time we did it, we programmed it in this bottle is now 70 percent. So we started that bottle at the 70 percent mark. But after that, every time it comes off. All right. It's 100%. It's 100%. Now, here's the thing. When I take that off, if it's only at 70% and it comes off, the report is going to say there's an exception. This bottle got a cap taken off before it was at 100% empty. So you could just tell your report, I want to know the exceptions. You could say to your exception report, I want it to be just the bottles that went empty, or I want every pour over two ounces, or, uh, I mean, whatever. You can, let, you can right. set the variables on it to almost any degree. Um, we, we were talking uh, about the, your vodka. The infamous, frozen vodka. Infamous frozen vodka. Yeah, I heard about that one. I the five-degree vodka. Yeah, the five-degree vodka. Yeah, the one that should be vodka, not water in the lines. Right. Um, this will work, and these, these tags will go down to minus 20. So you can, if you wanted to take a bottle and stick Jaeger in a, in a, you know, in a mug cooler or something like that, which is, goes down to, what, 20 degrees or something like that, this is so this shows how much I poured yes yes what it does is is, is it, it Actually, in real time, we'll go ahead and you'll notice that I pour. You go up there and you see it pop up. Now I can also check the status of the bottle and make sure that the product's proper. So if I go like this, now you watch that blue gauge. It actually reaches. <laughs> this is amazing. Yes. How do you do it? Huh? I mean, what's the technology behind this? The wireless transmitters, right. they go to an antenna, then they go to a collection unit. It goes to what? It goes to this receiver. Right. The antenna talks, or the spout talks to the antenna, the antenna then transmits it there, and it brings it up to there. Hawk. Little tilt sensor there. Right. And I come over here. And maybe one over we'll, No, right here, tape. Bud bite? Budweiser, yeah. Okay. Now, if I want to check the status of the Budweiser tag, I can find out how long before, and I can change it before it blows. So you can change it before the thing completely empties. How long are you guys around? And now in this uh, fourth step, we print the reports. There are various meaningful reports like this one, inventory extension summary. I know exactly how much inventory I have in my inventory left over. So I can know the quantity. I can also know the value of that based on how much I purchased with price. 
So inventory extension report contains the value of inventory on hand. And again, and again, this report is produced at the end of inventory extension, meaning that physically you go and count how much meat, seafood, chicken, produce, dairy you have left. And you compare that with what you have bought from the beginning of the month and the purchases minus what you have left. A food user's report is another report that shows me the food cost, food cost percentage. Like you see here, the actual food cost is 35%. Average food cost is 33%. So I know that this month I went over 2%. Is 2% a big deal in food cost? Yes, it is. It's a big deal because that can be the difference between making money or not. So that's very, very important that you actually take your extension physical inventory uh, on a, as frequently as possible. Some restaurants even do it on a daily basis uh, or weekly basis or monthly, as we said, at the most. And if you were to have this, that you'll be able to pinpoint the problems, why your food cost is increased and what you can do about it. If there is something you can do, such as substituting the item with something else, maybe that recipe that you're using is using that asparagus or special kind of cheese, maybe you will replace that. Of course, without the sacrificing the quality and the guest preferences. And reorder quantity reports suggest that reorder levels based upon forecasted sales, par levels, minimum and maximum order quantities lead time and historical usage statistics. What I mean is that, let's assume that you are um, uh, is a, is an Italian restaurant, pizzeria, and you have a six cheese pizza, okay? And one of the, or two of the cheeses really actually come literally imported from Italy. And you get that from a distributor, but the problem is that it takes two weeks or three weeks to get it, once you order. So if you know your average usage, and you know your last weekly usage, and you know how much left over in your inventory, and then you can, this number here, suggested weekly order, is a function which the inventory control system can calculate for you, is a function of how much is the lead time for that order to come. If you can order this morning and bring, the item can come in the afternoon, the lead time is one day, so you don't really need to worry about too much even if you are out of some item that you can order next day, it can come or the same day. But if in the example that I gave you, let's say in the pizza, that you have this special cheese, it takes one month or two weeks, whatever, then when you are calculating this reorder quantity, uh, or in other words, your par value, par amount and the uh, your reordered quantity amounts are in inter uh, related to each other a purchase order as you can see here is itemizes all products on order from a vendor and indicates the order and tentative receiving date projects invoice cost for the order receiving report is a report where let's say that you did the purchase order right you order the items and then the items come it come to your restaurant the food distributor brought it and just because you order, let's say, 50 pounds of tomato, doesn't mean that you get 50 pounds of tomato. Maybe they brought you 40 pounds of tomato, or you wanted a beef steak, but they brought you Roma a tomato. And if that's the case, then you have this report, you can tell that how much is what you have ordered and what they have actually gave you. I ordered two, they gave me two, but normally it's $22, but uh, they, there was a problem, let's say it was more expensive than what I normally ordered, whatever the variance can be. You want no variance, but if you want the variance, this is what you are going to pay to the vendor. You ordered 50 pounds of tomato, you ended up getting 40 pounds. So you're going to write this in this report, receive a report, so that your accounting office will pay them only 40 pounds, not what you ordered initially, 50 pounds. What is a menu management system? A menu management system is bigger than the inventory management system. A good menu management system will have an inventory management system. So it will contain that. It is, it enables the restaurant operator to price, control, 
and monitor the entire menu. Do you remember how I was telling you that when you sell an item and you're using point of sale system and it will deduct from the inventory, menu management system does that. And it will control your entire menu um, and the orders inventory on a regular basis and give you suggestions what you need to do. It generates a detailed item analysis and insight into what inventory usage and cost of sales should be. Uh, menu management system, uh, in order to track menu item cost, it's necessary to create ingredient file, recipe, and menu item files. Um, you're gonna see this video uh, that will actually talk about that in a, in a second. So once you create the ingredient file, uh, whatever that might be, let's say sliced cheese, if you have sliced cheese, unit description and cost. So you will put that in the menu management system. You will say that there's something called sliced cheese. There's something called uh, tomato paste. There's something called beans, whatever that, that you are going to use in your menu. And then you're gonna look at the unit description. Tomato, I will buy by kilogram or pounds. And the cost is per case, per kilogram, per pound, whatever that might be, you're going to write. And portions per unit. This is what I was telling you earlier. Remember the, the hamburger example, that, that slice of tomato? This is where it comes from. You will say, your chef will say, one pound of tomato is three each. And each each of tomato gives me 15 slices. See, that's called conversion rules. So you convert items from whatever it is into this one. For example, if I am, uh, another example, if I am using this mix nut, obviously I'm buying this by the box, right? The box is how many, it's about one pound, 14 ounce, or is uh, 850 grams. So if I am going to serve this in my bar, uh, next to the beer, let's say somebody orders, I give them this mix nut as a gift, right? As a service just like a small plate, or I may sell this, okay? So what I'm going to do is that to be able to calculate the cost is that from this 850 gram, what is my portion size going to be? And let's say that I'm going to use 50 gram, okay? So there is 850 gram in this box, I divide this, that's going to tell me portions per unit. And if I were to give this or sell, I know exactly how much it costs. So menu management system, actually allows me to do that. Same thing here for the sliced cheese. I know how much is the case, cost per case. I know how many slices per case, so I can calculate the cost per slice. If I'm using a, if I'm doing a burger and if I'm using one slice of cheese, I know that the cost of one slice cheese is 30 cents for my hamburger. These are arbitrary numbers, by the way. And you create the ingredient file. The next thing is the recipe file. You are going to create the recipe description, what it is. For example, I'm gonna say Caesar salad or garden salad, fruit salad, hamburger, cheeseburger, alfredo fettuccine with uh, chicken, uh, salmon, um, you name it, okay? Whatever that you can think. Think of like nice good meals. The chef is cooking them, but as this was done, I will create a recipe based on my chef. So recipe will tell me the quantity of the ingredients. He doesn't, he or she doesn't have to tell me the cost. That system, remember, this system is gonna help me to calculate the cost here. The chef just needs to tell me that, okay, for a burger, I need a bun, I need a beef patty, I need the slice of cheese, I need this much ketchup, this much mustard, this much mayonnaise, if you are using it, okay? And then the system is going to calculate the cost based on what is being used. And the, you know, in this recipe file, my chef can also even write the instructions, even attach food or video, or the outcome. When the burger is done, what does it look like? So that your staff can look that, does this look what I cook, look like what the chef has made, or what I show in my menu. Uh, serving weight after processing, because what you, do may not be the same what the outcome is. I gave you a good example, meat, right? There's what we call usable factor. Usable factor is what you input is not equal to output sometimes. 
banana is a good example remember you peel so one pound of banana may not actually one pound of actual banana maybe it's only 70 percent of it um, but again this is based on the food and your chef will be able to tell all these things to you and um, when you know what comes out this will reflect the shrinkage or evaporation meat is another good example you put one kilo or one pound meat in the oven after one or two hours that's not gonna come out as one kilogram so then you need to take this into account so that you don't blame anybody hey I uh, bought five pound of beef but you only sold three kilogram or three pounds why because that kilo two, two kilogram is gone uh, and it's expected recipe or batch cost it will give me servings per batch portioning tool serving portion serving portion cost and selling price cost as a percentage of price i'm going to show you and um, software uh, that will actually um, demonstrate some of this hi everyone and welcome to recipecosting.com my name is robert and I am very excited to tell you about our newest version of our software, Recipe Costing 4.0. This is an introductory video. It's going to be short. We're going to make several videos with all of the new features, all of the new enhancements, and we're going to send them out hopefully before August 8th, which is our launch date. So you'll start seeing some videos. We're going to start with this one. This is just to get you familiar. We didn't want to just give you an upgrade to the software and suddenly you log in and don't know where everything is and everything's being rearranged and even the look and feel is not the same anymore. So let's get started. Right now we're looking at the very new and improved dashboard. If you look at it, you'll see there are some headings up there. We have multiple companies, multiple locations, to and from dates so that you can actually select and take a look at a date range of one or all of your locations and it gives you an idea of your sales count your total sales your average sales your top selling items but right below it we even added a product mix and again we're going to go into detail of all these features this is really just to get you familiar with what's to come if you're brand new to recipe costing we've created a wizard so when you log in for the first time this wizard will guide you through all of the setup items necessary to get started with our software. If you're an existing recipe costing member, then you're not gonna need it, but you could still go through the wizard, it'll be there for you, and it covers every item you need to set up in its nine pages. Not very long, but really gets you going so you can get the software off and running. I mentioned earlier, we have multiple companies and locations. That's going to be under our setup section under Office. You're going to see a company, we have one here, but you can definitely have multiple companies within uh, the software. And if you only have one company, but you have multiple locations, we covered that as well. Here you can enter multiple locations and manage all of the locations and the data that's coming in right from the dashboard. We also enhance the employee page. It's called staff in the old version. We call it employee here, and if you click on it, You'll notice that it interacts and looks very much like maybe a deputy or a hot schedule. So if you're using any of those two programs, you may see a lot of similarities here. Next, I want to take a look at is production. So let's take a look at our food order guide. Food order guide looks very much the same. It has been better organized and features have been enhanced within the software. So we'll click on an example, baking powder. Just gives you an idea. You can upload a picture, tells you where you can find this item and allows you to toggle between food and materials. The biggest difference is that materials does not have a USDA database tied to it, and food does. Next, I wanna take a look at recipes. And we're just gonna look at recipes because sub recipes looks exactly the same, and to save time, we're just gonna look at one. If you click on it, you'll notice that you can scale it. This has been improved over the older version, and you can also print it in PDF as well. Let's take a look at the recipe details. Again, just better organized and enhanced. You'll see that you have your cost on top, your recipe information is right below, and all the items that make up this actual recipe when they're repurposed will be here. And at the very bottom, you can still add your labor, you can still add your materials, and you can still do your directions. Let's move on to menu items. Again, recipes, sub recipes, and menu items all have the scaling feature. So if you click on it and you click scale, you can scale by percentage 
or by portions. And if we look at the details and we go right into it, again, just better organized. Gives you all the information here, all the items that you're using and recipes to make up this plate. And then at the very end, it'll give you your cost, your food cost, your cost percentage, and your gross profits. Next, let's take a look at the transactions section. This has also changed. Expenses now support multiple companies as well as multiple locations. So selecting your location will begin to populate the data. These are all the fixed expenses for this location. And the software is saying, if I took all of these expenses and divide it out throughout the year daily, theoretically, I'd have to make about $981 per day. This is important because the daily sales, when you enter it, will also track these expenses for you. So let's take a look at daily sales. And you'll notice as I enter my daily sales, I will tell the software what I sold, how much I sold it for. If I have tax, it will add the tax to it. And it will tell me what my total sales are, any taxes, what my fixed expenses are. These are the ones that we detailed in our expense sheet and what my theoretical net profit is. So really giving me a better idea of how my costing is working with my software. The next section I want to talk about is the app marketplace. We are integrating with other vendors. We have two right now. We have several down the list that we want to integrate with. And we ask you to please send us your recommendations. We do listen to you. And for many of you who have been using the software and asking for these items, as you can see, we've integrated it. So I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this introductory video. Continue to look out for other videos that are going to be coming throughout the week. If you can't find them on the email site, feel free to go directly to our website where we'll have the videos and you can watch them from there. Thanks again. And you are going to get, uh, this is the recipe file. You'll be able to get a report like this. Again, in the video that I will show you, you'll be able to see. As a matter of fact, you can even go try by yourself uh, by using this recipe um, cost control system. Menu item file, uh, then I am going to create the menu. So once I make the recipe, uh, category description, menu item description, serving price. So this is where it's going to go to point of sale system and it's going to allow me to compare my cost of the food item with the sales price, accepted cost per percentage and the actual food cost percentage and the ingredients. Here's one example, two eggs, bacon and potato here is going to give me this particular um, table report. Step number four, post quantity sold and generate menu analysis report. What I mean is this, here's that if your inventory system, menu manual system is not connected to your point of sale system, you can manually enter your sales. If they are interfaced, you don't have to do it because as you sell, it will deduct automatically. But if you don't, and at the end of the each day's activities, the quantity of each menu item sold is manually or automatically, just like I told you, entered into the menu manual system to calculate theoretical usages, that's the perpetual inventory, remember, of all inventory products and generate various reports, evaluating menu and cost control performance. A product cost or menu mix report contains the selling price, the ideal cost, the percentage of the total sales and the gross contribution margin. In the previous uh, point of sale video that I covered this basically, but remember, many mix report contains these four quadrants. Actually, many management software um, module can help you draw this graphic, what you see on your screen uh, automatically. This way, you'll be able to take action. Remember again, all of this to follow trends, cost control, and maximize my profits. So here's um, my ranks based on the menu mix. You can tell how much money that I'm making from this item, contribution per week or monthly that you'll be able to tell and you can give them on the rank. And the menu price analysis report shows the impact of price changes a menu price analysis report shows the impact of price changes on the food cost percentage. This is the end of our chapter, but what I would like to do right now is to 
have you watch a video that I shot it's an interview with John Horn who is the owner of four restaurant chain in Bradenton Florida USA area he's a great supporter of the university here and he and I had this discussion about food cost restaurant and I would like to I would like to invite you to watch this video and just compare what you see in this video and what he tells you and compare to what you have learned in this chapter you're gonna learn a great deal from his video but again remember what he is talking about or what I have taught here mainly is the strategies management strategies controlling planning producing selling what technology does is just to help you for this reason please understand the value of the technology it is here to help you but it's not here to do the whole the work you will be able to do at the end the decisions to be able to take this menu item from the menu and put another one replace that with another one you are going to make this but these software solutions and in some cases hardware is going to help you to make that decision it's going to give you the data to make the best decision so that you can survive hopefully make a lot of money and uh, be in the business for many years to come thank you Hello, my name is Dr. Jihan Chobanolu. I'm the McKibben Endowed Chair Professor at the University of South Florida, Sarasota Manati in the College of Hospitality and Tourism Leadership. Today, I want to bring you to Anna Maria Oyster Bar, a uh, award-winning restaurant in Sarasota, Bradenton area. The purpose of this video is to show you what happens in a restaurant from the ordering of the food items, ingredients, all the way to the guest table. So I asked John Horn, the owner of Anna Maria Oyster Bar, to show us the process step by step. So come and join me inside. Let's see how the action is done. Hi, welcome to the Oyster Bar. John, thank you so much for hosting us here today. I appreciate you taking the time to educate our students uh, how a restaurant is run. Well, your so, students are important to us. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Absolutely. You know, I look at your menu, John. I'm a regular also to oh, Anna absolutely. Maria Oyster Bar as well. Before we get started, just tell us, what is Anna Maria Oyster Bar? You know, Jihan, we've been in business here in the Bradenton, Sarasota area for over 20 years. We have four locations all around the Bradenton, Ellington, Cortez area. We even have one out on the city pier in Bradenton Beach. That's our newest one. Wonderful. Very casual, fun seafood restaurants. It's seafood. Seafood is the, the, the main theme. It's, of the yeah. Oh, I mean, we call ourselves the Anna Maria Oyster Bar, but oysters are only about 10% of our menu. We, we predominantly seafood, but we also have steaks and, and ribs and things like that for the non-seafood fans. Right. They come with a group, right? right always. There's Absolutely. always one oddball that doesn't like <laughs> seafood, right? Absolutely. Who doesn't like seafood? Yeah. <laughs> so I see that in your menu you've got great uh, things going on. Looks like fish and chips is a central item. Salmon. It's one of our best sellers is the salmon fish and chips. Salmon is also another, another. You know, salmon is such a healthy fish. I mean, people love to eat salmon, not just for the flavor. It's a great fish, but it's a healthy fish for people as well. So salmon's a big fish. We do a slam and salmon special on Wednesday nights, so... It's a big seller for us. I think we bought 24,000 pounds of salmon last year. Wow. Yeah, a That's lot of great. salmon. That's great. So I'm curious, John, does this salmon come to your restaurant already cooked, prepared? So all you have to do is just take it from the supplier, 
put it in front of the guest. How does it work? Yeah, no, it's not quite that easy. We've got a little magic box in the back. So we just put it in there and put what <laughs> item we want and it comes out. It's perfect. Uh, Can you please run through <laughs> this process? How does yeah. it work? Absolutely. I mean, we order salmon. It comes fresh from Chile every day. Uh, we get it delivered. It comes in about a 40 pound case. It still has the skin on. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's a gorgeous product when it comes in. It's, it's chilled in a uh, styrofoam container. We break the seal that's come through inspection and, and, you know, it comes on the docks. It's inspected by the feds. We break the seal. We take it out. We skin it. We cut it to portion. I mean, we're always cutting at an angle, you know, always cut your salmon at a bias so it doesn't curl up when you cook it. They, portion it out for what size they need. We use a six ounce portion on some of our specials. So they make sure it's the proper portion. If it's six and a half ounces, they cut part of that off. So, you know, when you do your theoretical yield, you say, well, I know that salmon comes in, it's 683 a pound. We're gonna get about 96% yield. So, you know, theoretically you can divide that by 0.93 and that's for the skin that you're gonna cut off and the belly flap and so forth. That's your theoretical number. Uh, what's the real number? Well, when you start cutting it and you're like, oh, that's got pen bones in it, so it's supposed to come in pen bone out, you'll find pen bones and they'll have to cut a part of that out. So you don't get a true, you know, it's not always a 96, 93, it's all over the board. So to get the real yield, that's where we have to work on it. So it's all beginning inventories, ending inventories. So our kitchen managers take an inventory daily. They're ordering some of these products every day. So they know what their usages are, so they're going through the coolers, they're going through the dry storage. Let's just use salmon for the one example. He goes in, he does an inventory, he finds out what he's got on the shelf. He knows what his par is for the time of year. And we have two different pars. We have a seasonal par and a regular par. Uh, in Florida, we're very cyclical. In the winter, we have a lot of our visitors from the north come in. So our volume can double in some months compared to the summer months. So you have two different pars. So let's just say hypothetically, I'm going through 40 pounds of salmon a day. So my kitchen manager looks, I mean, you use a regular what's online that's ready to be cooked. You just consider that always on hand. So that's, you know, your cushion for inventory so you don't run out. So if, if I've got 22 pounds in the walk-in cooler and I know I need 40 and I'm ordering for two days, so I need 80 pounds, he's gonna order probably at a minimum of 60 pounds of, of salmon for the following delivery. You have to work around if it's a 40 pound case, then obviously you're gonna order 80 pounds. But they're looking at what they need for the two days that that has to last. If it's a daily delivery, you get it just what you need. You can't leave it on the shelf. You're ordering just what you think you're gonna sell. If, if, if you order too much, it sits more than three days, you put it in the garbage can. You're not gonna sell, you know, you're not gonna sell an old product. So it's very crucial that they're watching their pars closely. They're watching their inventories. You don't want to buy too much because you have waste. You don't want to buy too little. Then you're out and you're 86 to product and you're telling your guests that came in for their favorite meal, sorry, we, we ran out. I mean, you can cover all you want and say we had a rush on it or all this, but it was just bad on our part. That's a balance that you have to. It's manage. a fine balance. It really is. I mean, we always say you want just in time deliveries. You want a delivery coming in right when you use the last one, but that creates heck, a little bit of chaos. You want it just in time the day before. So in the process, just to recap, so your kitchen manager uh, looks at your inventory on hand and yes. the storage, determines how much you need to order. Right. So that, how does that work? So, so let's work? say he orders 80 pounds. He gets his delivery the next day. He's checking in his inventory. As it comes by, he looks and he's expecting, he look, he's got his purchase order. He sees, he knows he ordered 80 pounds, and I'm just using one item for the example. He's looking for 80 pounds of salmon. He looks on his invoice, he sees 80 pounds, he sees it come in the door, he knows he got it, the order. Or if it says 40 pounds and they were back ordered, let's say the supplier was out. You know, it, it's a fresh product. You don't, Sometimes the boats don't come in. Sometimes there's storms in Chile. There's all kinds of things that can cause a product not to come in. But then he knows that. So he didn't say, well, I got 80 pounds. He knows he got 40 pounds. He can either try to find another vendor or we just don't push it at the restaurant that day. So there's a lot of options there, but he knows what he got in. So when he's doing his costs, he knows that he ordered 80, but he only got 40. So he's using that as his basis when he's so looking at So the invoice is adjusted. The invoice is automatically adjusted. Okay. 
Now, let's just say hypothetically it wasn't on the truck and it's still on the invoice. Then you'll adjoy, adjust the, the invoice. Later. I mean, you'll just write it on there, ordered 80, the invoice paid 80, but only 40 arrived, and you'll deduct 40 pounds at 683. Do you find yourself sometimes that you order 80 pounds of salmon and it comes, maybe not salmon, salmon may not be a good example, but let's say it would be tomato or, or produce. And then even though they sent you the right amount, but you sent it back some because it doesn't fit to your quality. It, absolutely. Quali I mean, produce, I mean, it can be bad produce. I mean, there's times where you'll get rotten tomatoes. You'll get moldy lemons. Send it back. Fresh, fresh grouper comes in. If it's not fresh, we'll send it back. So you have to adjust your invoice and you have to adjust, adjust your parts because you think you've got 20 pounds of grouper or 40 pounds of salmon and you don't. So you either need to get your vendor to bring it to you later in the day or you make do with tomorrow's delivery. So the process is working. You ordered, the food came, you received the product, right. checked that if it is the quantity. We, quality, we prepped it, got it ready to go on the line for cooking. Yes. And, and then for the items that is not in the uh, prep line, they are kept in storage. Right. Right. They right. are in the storage to be used to for be used the next day. Either or tomorrow day. or the next shift. I mean, we'll, we'll stock the line for lunch and then we'll stock it again for dinner because sometimes you have larger, different portions. If you do a six ounce portion at lunch and an eight ounce portion at dinner, you want to pull all the six ounce at oh. the end of lunch and you want just nothing but eight ounce. You mentioned that you sometimes, if, if the uh, prep cook is preparing the salmon, 6.5 instead of six. Right. So that we cut it. Why? Why don't you give some the guests a little bit more salmon? Right. I would appreciate it. You would until you come in and you get six ounces the proper portion the next time. You're like, man, eh, it was a little bigger. And I know a half an ounce is a half an ounce, but it makes a difference. Because what if it's seven ounces? Uh, let's give it to them. Consistency is the most important thing in the restaurant so industry. You want your guests to see the same product every time. Every time. Come. Every time they come in, what happens if they go to one of our other restaurants and they do it the right portion, but this one is over portion? What if it's five and a half ounces? Ah, they'll never know. Yes, they will. It has to be the same. Consistency is yes, so important. Right? They, Absolutely. They they feel. Yeah. Exactly. And we, we're fortunate. We have guests that eat with us two, three, four times a week. So they will notice quickly. Repeat guests. Yes, yes. Which they'll notice mean? quickly. I mean, and some of them eat the same thing every time they come in. It's amazing. And they'll notice in, in a heartbeat. So the, the product is cooked, is served to the guest. Right. And um, after that, what happens? Do you, how do you calculate the cost? Right. So you, got, you purchase, purchase, purchase throughout the month. Okay. And I assume that at some point of time that you will need to calculate the cost. The true cost. True yes. Cost. Yeah. The how true food cost. That? What is the process for that? We do, we do inventories, obviously, every day to, for ordering. But we do a monthly, very, very... Through. Throughout inventory. So our kitchen manager and our managing partner come in at four o'clock on Monday morning of the new month. Uh, we're on physical calendars. So they come in and they both inventory. So you've got your beginning inventory that you did at the beginning of the month. You've got your ending inventory. You put those in all your purchases. If I had, if I ordered 80 pounds 14 times, I know how many pounds that is. I know how many came in. And then we get what's called a product mix from our point of sale. And it will tell you all the products that were sold. So if, if your beginning inventory is X pounds plus your delivery, less your ending inventory, I went through, let's just say, 500 pounds of, of salmon. For sake of example. For example. I, I went through, in my theoretical, I went through 5,000 pounds. Well, that's not theoretical. That's what I had and bought. And if I get my product mix in and I say, well, it's six ounce portions and I sold 100 of this item and 200 of this, I add all those up and I add up the total weight that I sold. Then you look and say, well, I used 500, but I sold 400. What happened That's a bad, pounds? yeah, what happened to 100 pounds? Did I over portion? Did it go bad and we had to throw it away? Did someone steal? I mean, there's so many options and, and we have great controls in our restaurant. That doesn't mean it doesn't happen. That doesn't mean that we don't have waste. Uh, and that's what you have to control. And that's, that's where new technology is helping. Because um, you can't do that intricate on paper like we used to do on every item. So that's where technology is helping. You come out with the, 
you put it in. There's so many different ones too. We use one uh, that's through our vendor. So it's updated price-wise. Hey, and it ties into our point of sale. It knows how many salmon items we did. It tells you how many we should have used, how many ounces of salmon we should have used. Then you can compare that to your inventory. And you're putting the inventories in there as well. So, so we're putting our inventory into this uh, software package. It creates all of the, it knows what our deliveries were because it's with the vendor. It knows how many we bought. It knows how many we had at the beginning. It'll tell you what your usage was and it'll compare to what your sales were because it integrates with the point of sale. It integrates with our vendor. Instead of all the paperwork that we used to do or didn't do, but should have done. It's now we know it's hard. It's, it's hard. hard to do. But technology really helps technology is phenomenal. Streamline that process. Yes. And almost real time. Yes. You can watch it. Well, and I'll tell you one of the benefits. You you mentioned real time, but here here's one of the great things about technology is every morning you can have a dashboard that says, and let's just use the example. There's a problem in Chile. Salmon went up two dollars a pound, and it does. It'll go up. It'll go down. So salmon went up two dollars a pound. So You'll have a dashboard and it'll say salmon and it'll have a red, it'll be highlighted in red. And what that's saying is your menu is set at 33%, but with what you're paying, the food cost on salmon this week is 42%. And so you set where you want. I don't want to sell anything over 38%. So then the general manager and the kitchen manager, they come in, they look at their dashboard every morning and they see a red and they're like, oh my goodness, we don't want to sell salmon. So... At their shift meetings, they'll say, you know, we're not pushing salmon today. Let's push tilapia. Let's push oysters. Let's push something that's down in the green or the yellow that's, you know, price to drop. Conversely, if salmon, you know, there's the fishermen come in, it's great season. They're getting salmon. Salmon drops $2. Man, let's push salmon today. It, it's not Wednesday slam and Sammy special, but let's push it because it's a great food cost. So that's where the technology helps you tremendously as well. And what you described, John, is the recipe for success for a successful restaurant, right? <clears throat> there, are, there is a statistic, six out of 10 restaurants that open today are not in business in three years. Three years, I think yeah. one of the main reasons is a lack of cost control. See, what you just described is active cost control yes. on a day-to-day -day basis so that you can, uh, because the profit margins in restaurant business are lean, Oh. So if you don't pay it's so tight. These, it's so tight. So when the salmon is two dollars a pound, you push it, so you're going to lose money. Right, right. So this helps you. Basically, you can change. You can't change the menu unless you have digital boards. You can't change the price. If your menu's printed, like I have here, I mean, you know, it's got the price right there. I can't change that price because salmon went up two dollars. Maybe once a year, or a couple of times. A right. Year. Well, yeah, you can reprint, but not today. I mean, if there's a, a problem with salmon today. So this enables you to adjust what you sell, what you push. So you can tell the servers. I mean, they're not going to go by the table and say, don't order salmon today, but they're going to glorify another my menu item. You know, I had the tilapia almondine last night. It was delicious. Try that. <laughs> and, you know, you plant that picture in their mind, and they'll eat that instead of salmon. Exactly. Well, you know, I really wanted salmon. Oh, salmon's great. This is better. That's our special today. Our right. Chef recommends right. Something like so this. you can, you know kind of discreetly work people cost? around your menu. Great. What's the cost percentage that you normally shoot for in food? Well, we're seafood and we're fresh seafood. Most of our items are fresh, so it's going to be higher. I mean, you, you want 32, 33% is what the maximum is a good rule of thumb, but with fresh seafood, you can be 38, 48%. Really? Yeah. I see. Yeah. And you have the waste factor. I mean, it's, it's not a frozen product. You have three days to bring it in, to, to prep consume. it, and to sell you don't Absolutely. freeze it if it is not no no so if it is not used it, trash. it goes bye bye i see john um so in the restaurant business you mentioned theft you mentioned waste mm -hmm. waste we understand now you explain yeah does theft happen oh yeah I, it's funny my dad asked me when i was 10 years in the business he said do you think people steal from me and i went every day not intentionally. I mean, yes, some of it's intentionally, but you can, you can be a theft by throwing more in the garbage, by not opening all the oysters because you're tired. I mean, it, that to me is theft. I see. You know, you're, you're stealing. But there, there can be, absolutely. I mean, and you have to keep your eyes open and you have to control. And some portion of it, I, I guess, is accepted. Yes. 
yes. or expected and accepted, yeah. kind of like it's well, a human being. We try to, to help prevent that by giving our staff the, the ability to comp a meal. To, you know, if they've got a regular comp a meal, don't try to hide something. Don't give them a free drink and tell them this is on the house. Not try to hide it to get something. You know, we're, we're very open with our staff. We want to help with them. Perfect. Now, I want to close uh, uh, our conversation, John, with your, some of your advices for future restaurateurs. You know, this video will be shown to uh, hospitality and culinary students around the world. Yeah. What would be some of the advices that you learned over the years doing this business for 20 yeah. years is tremendous success yeah. when we know that the average life of a restaurant is very short. Right. So what are the things that you want to say uh, to future restaurateurs in terms of the people who want to open their business? Some piece of advice. I just want to, yeah. normally this was not something we planned, right. but I, that I have somebody like you here who's got this wonderful experience and you are an amazing community supporter also to, to give back to many different things by just even uh, spending the time today with us to give back to education. What are some of the um, kind of like lessons learned along yeah. the way? To me, I mean, you need to embrace technology because it'll help you. And what it will help you do is what we used to do by hand and time consuming. Because the most important thing you can do in a restaurant is be in your restaurant. Don't get so tied up on, on paperwork. You need to be out with your guests. You need to be with your staff and let them, sh you need to show your staff that you care about your guests so that they will. The guests are the most important thing. You can have a great food cost if you've got no guests. It doesn't matter what your food cost is. So it's important to be in your restaurant. And that's where, that's what I love about the technology because we used to do everything by hand. I mean, we would literally put into a spreadsheet the inventory and the P mixes and it was all data entry. You need to be in the dining room. You need to talk to your to your guests, and that's the key to the success: is making your guests part of you, and and doing everything you can to make them happy. Wonderful, perfect. Thank you so much, John. We My pleasure. It. I appreciate helping. Thank I really you. do. You guys are awesome. Thanks for asking. Thank you.